I am Dr. Franklin Yao with Vanguard Vascular and Vein in Dallas, Texas. In this brief video, we will be discussing deep venous thromboses and pulmonary embolisms. We will discuss the risk factors, the symptoms of presentation, the diagnostic testing, as well as the most current available therapies. Thank you for tuning in. I will have answers to all your questions coming right up. I am a board certified vascular and endovascular surgeon and founder of Vanguard Vascular and Vein. Deep venous thromboses and pulmonary embolisms are two of the most common vascular conditions that we take care of here at Vanguard. A deep venous thrombosis, or DVT, is a blood clot that forms in the veins of the legs. The veins connect the circulation of the legs to the heart and lungs. A deep venous thrombosis can break loose and travel in the veins through the heart into the lung. At this point, the deep venous thrombosis becomes a pulmonary embolism, or a PE. A pulmonary embolism can obstruct the blood flow to the lungs and lead to a pulmonary infarction or permanent damage in the lungs. This affects the lungs' ability to exchange gases, such as absorb oxygen and release carbon dioxide, and can decrease the lung's ability to breathe. That's why patients with a PE experience chest pain and shortness of breath. The primary risk factors associated with deep venous thromboses and pulmonary embolisms include the following. An inherited clotting disorder, prolonged bed rest during a long hospitalization, recovery from surgery, recovery from trauma, pregnancy, cancer, smoking, and taking oral contraceptives or hormone replacement therapy. These risk factors leads to an imbalance in the clotting mechanism of the blood so that the blood clots form in the veins. Scenarios that are commonly associated with deep venous thromboses and PEs are prolonged sitting during a long car ride or a plane ride, a major abdominal surgery or orthopedic surgery, and prolonged bed rest during a long hospitalization. When a patient develops a DVT in the leg, they experience pain, swelling, redness, and warmth. The severity of the symptoms increases with the size of the clot. When the DVT breaks loose and goes to the lung and becomes a pulmonary embolism, the patient experiences chest pain and shortness of breath, and usually shortness of breath with minimal exertion. In severe cases, the patients can lose consciousness develop low blood pressure, and in some cases, develop sudden cardiac arrest. The diagnosis of a DVT is made by performing an ultrasound examination of the legs. This examination can be rapidly performed in a doctor's office with excellent accuracy. The diagnosis of a PE can be made by performing a CT scan of the chest. In instances where a CT scan cannot be performed, such as the patient cannot be administered a contrast agent, then a nuclear medicine scan called a ventilation perfusion scan is obtained. After a diagnosis of a DVT or a PE is made, the initial step in treatment is to start a blood thinner or an anticoagulant. The most common anticoagulant used include heparin in the form of low molecular weight heparin, Xarelto, Eliquis, or Coumadin. The anticoagulants have two major effects. The first is that it prevents the propagation or the growth of the clot. And the second is that it prevents the embolization or the clot breaking loose and going to the lungs. The anticoagulants do not have a direct effect on dissolving the clot. However, it mitigates the clot from getting worse and prevents it from going to the lungs, which clinically stabilizes the patient and enables the medical team to be able to determine what the next step in therapy should be. After stabilizing the patients with anticoagulation, the next step is to determine if patients would benefit from further additional therapies. There are endovascular minimally invasive procedures that can remove clots from the legs and from the lungs. Patients with a large amount of clot with severe pain and swelling in their legs or a large amount of clot with significant heart or lung damage or complications from their PE may be candidates for these endovascular procedures. 
For the retrieval of a blood clot from a DVT, we can utilize a device called the Inari Clot Retriever System. The main advantage of this latest development in clot treatment is that this system removes large clots without relying on using thrombolytic medications, thereby significantly lowering the bleeding risk of the procedure. Its unique design is an over-the-wire system which enables removal of clot burden from the veins. There are two elements to the system, the clot retriever catheter and the clot retriever sheath. The catheter features a nitinol coring element and a braided collection bag. The sheath features a self-expanding nitinol funnel at the end of the sheath. Upon obtaining venous access, a guide wire is inserted and guided through the clot. The clot retriever sheath is inserted over the guide wire and positioned below the clot. The funnel is then deployed to maximize capture of the clot. Next, the clot retriever sheath is deployed past the clot and positioned for deployment. The catheter is then unsheathed to open the nitinol coring element and collection bag inside the vein. The catheter is then slowly retracted towards the sheath, coring and separating the clot from the vessel wall and capturing it within the collection bag, which prevents the clot from breaking loose and traveling to the lungs. The collection bag is withdrawn into the funnel and collapsed to remove the entire clot out of the sheath. After successful clot retrieval, the sheath is removed and standard vessel closure is performed. For the retrieval of blood clot from a PE in the lung, we utilize a system called the Inari Flow Retriever System. This device is specially designed to navigate into the lung vessels to engage, disrupt, and extract blood clots from the lungs. The procedure begins with accessing the patient's vein in the leg, and a guide wire is navigated through the clot in the lung. The flow retriever catheter is then advanced over the guide wire and positioned just proximal to the clot. Using the large syringe, a negative pressure vacuum is generated and the clot is retrieved through the large bore catheter. If there is residual clot, a catheter with nitinol discs which can engage the clot and liberate it from the vessel wall is utilized. Patients' oxygen levels, blood pressure, and heart function usually dramatically and immediately improve after clot removal from the lungs. The flow retriever system has enabled us to be able to remove large amounts of blood clots from the lungs without using thrombolytic therapy, thereby decreasing the risk of bleeding. These advances in endovascular therapy have enabled us to take care of these patients without major surgery and oftentimes with minimal anesthesia, enabling the patients to recover quickly and to be able to go home right away. In addition, these procedures are much more safe because we do not have to use thrombolytic therapy, which significantly decreases the risk of bleeding. If you have developed symptoms of a DVT or a PE, please do not delay in seeking medical attention immediately. Early intervention can not only save your life, but it can also prevent complications and help you recover more quickly and more completely. Thank you for tuning in to this video. I hope that it has been helpful. If you are interested in other vascular topics, check out our other available videos.